Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell by the title down below, in this video we are going to be making some Portuguese tarts. I'm so excited for this. I've only ever tried one type of Portuguese tarts and that was in Adelaide at Costco and that was damn amazing. I've never tried one like from a bakery or anything like that, but I'm so excited to give this a go. Without further ado, I'll show you guys the ingredients and we'll just start making the tarts. All right, so for the pastry or the dough for this recipe, which is going to be the first stage of making this recipe, we want some plain flour, some very soft room temperature, like very, very soft butter, as well as a little bit of salt and some water. And then for the custard section, we are going to do, there's gonna be like three different sections in the custard part, but we want some flour and some milk, and then we'll use some more milk and the lemon peel. And then we want to do like a sugar syrup. So we need some water with the caster sugar and a cinnamon stick will go into with that. And then we'll need six large egg yolks. Just the yolks, not the whites. Um, obviously I haven't separated them. That's not going to be for a few hours yet. So we'll put this stuff back in the fridge. But just obviously means for this video, I've taken it out to show. But yeah, for the eggs, just the yolks we want. And then just to top them off, we are going to have a little bit of ground cinnamon and some icing sugar. These two things are completely optional. I'm going to be using um, them for mine, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's completely optional. And some tools as well as obviously like your normal mixes, your spoons, your pots, your like saucepans and uh, what's the other one? Your mixing bowls. But some other tools we will be needing is... A measurer to weigh out some ingredients a sifter and a scraper this personally isn't mine I haven't had a dough scooper a scraper or I think that's what they're called I don't exactly know what they're called but just a scrape off the dough from the surface so this isn't mine I borrowed it from my mother-in-law thank goodness she had one um, so yeah these are definitely things you will you will need especially this guy if you don't have one of these i don't think it's gonna work so make sure you get one of these before you start preparing for this recipe all right so in my bowl i got a sifter here ready i've weighed out 290 grams of the plain flour we want to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt i've just got pink himalayan salt that's the only type i have so should be all right put a bit of that in and with my water I've also measured out 210 milliliters of water now this dough now this dough is going to be very wet and very very sticky so I'm going to mix it as much as I can And when it's all kind of come together, as you can see, I'm just going to dump it out on my surface here. My surface is obviously clean. And because I am doing this by hand and not a dough hook, I'm just going to knead it just a little bit just to get it really nice and round and smooth out. If you are using a dough hook, you won't need to knead it, but it is very, very sticky dough. So it doesn't take long at all for it to come together as a ball to flour the surface. And you'll be using a lot of flour um, in this recipe and that's completely okay. So I'm just going to roll it up in the flour. Try to form it as a square. cover up with some plastic so it doesn't dry out and I'm just going to leave this for about 10 to 15 minutes for it to just rest. Alright so at the start when I was showing ingredients there was one thing I forgot to mention is a rolling pin. We want a rolling pin for this video. Anyway it has been 10 minutes so I'm going to uncover this and using my scraper. I'm just going to set this off to one side while I'm going to chuck the flour more evenly across this whole section. Putting this 
back on here. Okay, so you're going to want to do. <laughs> I also want to flour my rolling pin and we're going to start rolling it out to roughly a 16 by 16 centimeter, uh, 16 by 16 inch square. That's the goal. <laughs> so as you can see, I got a lot of dough surface. I'm just going to brush away gently the excess flour on top as well as I can. All right, so I've just measured out 240 grams of my soft unsalted butter and pretty much I want an imaginary line of one third. So this side I'm going to leave uh, with no butter and I'm gonna butter the rest. So to start that off, I'm gonna use about a third of my butter in total. I'm just gonna do little sections and daubs I'm using an offset spatula for this. You can just use a normal butter knife. I'm just going to do this just so I have a little bit more control. So if you do have one of these, definitely use one of these. But if not, it's totally fine. And now very carefully and gently, I'm just going to spread it right out to the edges on the two thirds of my dough. So now the butter is evenly spread out, using the scooper but trying to not scoop up the excess flour. We want to fold this unbuttered side over onto the butter side. So definitely scrape and lift and pull as you're going. untuck that as well and then the same from this side over into itself in the middle but before I do that I'm just going to quickly brush off this excess flour underneath as much as you can it doesn't matter if you don't get it all off if you do have a brush um, that's very light bristle not a silicon brush Definitely use that, <laughs> it would help more, but I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use my fingers. And now, <clears throat> same thing from this side over. And same thing, try to brush off the excess flour. And now we want to do is turn this log over to this way. So to do that, I'm just going to fold it in over itself just to help move it. Turn. And then unfold, which is easy to do because you've got the flour in between and there's no butter to stick it down. Get some more flour for the tops and bottoms of your surface area. And some of this flour is flour this again and now we want to roll to make the same kind of shape so now it's rolled out again repeat the same process so we're going to start with the brushing off the excess flour putting another one third of our butter over two thirds of the dough And then repeat as well with the scraping your non-buttered side first over to in the middle to reach the buttered side.
brush off excess flour and then your buttered side over to the middle on top of this section here And the same thing as well, fold it over onto itself. And rotate once more. Unfold, brush off the excess flour. And repeat once more. All right, so now this section is going to be slightly different to the other two buttering. Instead of buttering two thirds of the dough, we want to do butter over the whole lot. So with the remaining butter here, I'm just going to dob it on and spread it out over the whole entire lot, the whole surface of the pastry dough we've got down here. All right, so now with that completely covered in butter, now is going to be the tricky, tedious rolling part. Oh my God, I'm looking at you fine. Look at my dress, I'm covered in flour. Anyway, we are going to want to scrape, roll, and dust away flour all at the same time. So how I've rolled it out, this is my shorter length. Up here is my longer length. I should have done it the other way, but that's right, because you want your longest length to be rolled so you get a longer roll rather than a shorter roll so I'm gonna start by scraping well I should really start by trying to shovel the excess flour away scrape a section still being very careful and use a scraper to help start a tight roll so I've done a little bit and now I just want to try and ugh, dust this flower I really have done this backwards, but you just want to be very careful. It's actually not that flowery underneath, thankfully. When you feel like you need to, use your scraper again to scrape and help lift it up. And then keep rolling. And when it's near the end as well, you can just go on the other side to try and lift it all up from your surface. And now at the end as well, you want to try and make it the tightest as possible. So try and pull it back a little as you roll forward. When you do have excess flour, remember just to dust it away. Using a sharp knife, I just want to trim off the edges. So here it obviously kind of <laughs> rolled out. So just where it starts to get the nice shape again we'll cut that we'll cut that off and you can just see the layers of butter and pastry in that and I'll just do a little bit on this end because this end kind of worked pretty good I think that's because it was closest to me um we want to chop this in half as well and now you've got two separate portions of dough so we're going to wrap these both in cling film and I'm going to set them in the fridge for a minimum of two hours the longer the better but it's going to be two hours for me today <laughs> all right so it's been about an hour and a half so I'm going to start the custard while my pastry dough logs are still in the fridge um, 
but this will take about a half an hour or so to do so in my bowl here I have got 40 grams of plain flour and I'm going to add in 60 milliliters of milk and the milk as well like all the milk sections in this recipe is all full cream full fat milk so you just want to whisk this together try and not like try to get the lumps out but if there's still a little bit of lumps it's okay because when we add the hot milk that's going to help melt it and bring it all down and nice and smooth so in the saucepan here i've added 240 grams of caster sugar to that i'm going to add 165 milliliters of water just normal cold room temp water it doesn't really matter and to that as well i got cinnamon sticks here i'm just going to take one out and add that in there this is now going to go into the hob on a medium to a low to medium heat i'm not going to stir it i'm just going to let it there until the sugar dissolves and it comes up to a simmer okay so this is now boiling so i'm going to turn off the heat and tip it into another bowl that i got preheated so just here I tipped in some boiling water to preheat at my bowl. I'm going to just keep it in the saucepan, but I need a saucepan to do the next step because my other pot has oil in it. So I'm going to tip that in there, wash out my pot, and then we'll go on to the next step. Alright, so now into this pot I am going to be putting in 250 ml of milk. And with in the milk I got my lemon here I've just taken off a couple of strips of peel which that will go in and that will also go onto the hob for a medium heat until it comes up to a boil all right so this has come to a boil now so we'll give it another stir I'm going to take off well turn off the heat take the lemon peels out Oh, where's the other one? <laughs> there it is. All right, so the lemon peels are now out, and we're going to add this to the flour and water, uh, flour and milk mixture we done earlier. So I'm going to try and consistently mix this. I'm going in a very slow, steady stream and being extra careful because it's very hot to tip in the milk. maybe I should swap pans since I'm wearing it. This feels better to make so. <laughs> this is much better this way. I'm taking the cinnamon stick out of the sugar water. And because of my bowl was very hot, I've just tipped the sugar, uh, the cinnamon water out, and it's just that same thing. So I've just tipped it out of the bowl, put it in this pot, same pot. It doesn't really matter, it's all getting mixed in together anyhow. But again, just be very careful because it is very, very hot. And I'm just going to slowly mix this now. You don't really want it to be airy or flamey or anything, but you do want to still use a nice big balloon whisk just to get some nice cool air into this mixture to cool it down so I'll be here just stirring it quite lightly for all the next 10 to 15 minutes until it's cooled you don't want it to be cold or you don't want it to be room temperature you still want a little bit of warmth into it but you do not want it hot at all all right so this mix has definitely cooled down now I've just separated some egg yolks from the egg whites in a separate bowl I'm just going to quickly bash them down and just mix it around with a, uh, what's this? Not a spoon, a fork. <laughs> just so they're like incorporated so it makes in with the custard filling easier. So now while this is stirring we want to chuck in the yolks. combined just like that 
you just set this side for a moment um, the bubbles in the air that you just created will die down I'm going to set this aside I'm going to get the logs out so they have now been in for it's now 3.13 so this whole process took me 45 minutes not half an hour um, so yeah I'll take out the logs and get them cut ready to cut in size and then we'll start baking them So it's been in for yeah two hours and fifteen minutes. Quite solid. All right, so with the log here, uh, hopefully that'll be okay. That should be okay. I'm going to well, first of all, I got my twelve case cup can cup can cupcake tray liner thing. So twelve here, I'm going to cut it directly in half. Wow. So you can see, oh, where am I going? All of the buttery goodness in between that pastry. And here, there we go. Now I figured out my slices. Oh my geez. Oh, so pretty. Um. All right, so we got my 12 slices. I don't know why that was so hard for me to figure out. But we do want to work kind of quickly because obviously coming into room temperature, I've got the oven also preheated, preheating at 350 degrees Celsius. So hot oven. So we'll place one in each. And now working with a wet fingers and thumbs, we want to push in the middle and work our way up the sides of the pastry, of the casing. I think this is the trickiest part of the whole entire lot, to be honest. I feel like it's just one, one of those things, once you do it a few times, you'll be fine at it. Okay, that one's still pretty thin on my bottom, but the outside it looks much better than my first so just keep going with it and keep practicing obviously you got 12 to do 24 if you decide to do both vlogs so we're getting close to the end now so that makes me very excited this is how my cases turn out for me because these are like melted it is now so hot in my kitchen so i'm hoping they'll be okay but for me the using the water trick was all right for the first couple but then because they're just softening it just using the water it just got too sludgy so if they're still firm use water if, once they're gone down to temp i do not recommend using water because that was a lot trickier so with the custard i got a clean bowl here with a sieve i'm just going to pour the custard over the sieve just to get rid of any lumpy eggy bits that might not have gone down and also with the cinnamon there was a few pieces of cinnamon that um, kind of broke off from the stick and then from here we're going to fill these fill these with this so I don't have a jug or anything if you have a jug definitely use a jug I'm just going to use one of these scoops and you want to fill these up about three quarters of the way full
These are going to go in my preheated oven at 350 degrees fan force. If you can get your oven to 380 or 390, definitely do that. And that would only be in for about six to eight minutes. My highest, the highest my oven goes is 350. So I've got it preheated onto that and these will go in. I'm still going to keep an eye on it, but it might take a little longer. It might be more closer to the 15 minute mark, but I'll let you know how long they stay in for. But we want these tops to be nice and bubbly and brown and just, oh, delicious. So, so excited for this. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to pop these in now. Alright, so they just came out of the oven. I think it's hilarious. You can see where I was trying to wipe up the mess everywhere, but that's alright. Unfortunately, these spots, that's what we want. And I didn't get many. The best one's this one in the corner here. Um... Yeah, unfortunately we didn't get much, but I just didn't want the pastry to burn. So I decided to take them out. But once I noticed as well, once they start getting the spots, they do get the colour quite quickly. So I could have left it maybe in for a minute or two longer. But like I said, I didn't want the pastry to actually be burnt. So I did take them out now. Um, I just think it all boils down to my other oven temperature, because like I said, realistically these should be baked at 290 degrees, but yeah, my oven only goes up to 250. So these will do. They're still going to be completely cooked through and they look delicious. These ended up being in for 15 minutes. So I'm just going to let them cool for a couple of minutes. I'll transfer them to the wire rack. I sound, I sound so stupid. Oh my god. Um, in just a couple of minutes. I'll just let them cool in the tin for a couple of minutes. Transfer them. I'll wait till the tin's complete cut and I'm going to go on with the next batch. Experiment time. <laughs> <laughs> all right so pretty much because we do want these to be nice and bubbly and golden i'm going to try and blow torch them just lightly on the surface see what happens but i also don't want the pastries around it to be burnt so experiment i don't even know how to do this Ooh. I mean, I guess it works. Look how cool that is, that works. Okay, I'm so happy with that. Do you want to do the rest? No, not the rest, but I'll do it. That is so cool. All right, so the next batch is in the oven, so time to dust these ones were just a little bit of ice and sugar since I've cooled down a bit but they're still a little warm and on top of that I'm going to add just a touch of cinnamon to each I'm just going to move these off to the side so then when the new batch comes out well not the new batch but the next batch comes out it can fit in and also with the one, the batch that's in the oven now, I only made 11. So I had enough custard for 12, but I decided to cut the um, dough only into 11 circles just to give me a little teeny tiny bit extra dough for each part. And that worked so much better. It was so much more handy. So if this is your first time, I do recommend to do each half of the two different dough or the pastry logs just to do 11 not 12 just so much easier i cannot believe on the difference it made but anyway the other ones are still in the oven so i'll show you guys what they look like when they come out all right i can't wait these are just too cute there is a little tiny hole in the bottom of this one i think that's the only one that had a hole but the thing didn't the, uh, the custard didn't go all the way through so i'm gonna taste test i cannot wait i'm so excited All right, I'm gonna taste it. No way did I ever make that. It is so good. This tastes like good. <laughs> I don't believe I made these. They're too good for something I make. Mm. And the pastry, you can just see the layers. 
Wow. And the custard, I'm completely cooked for it. These are incredible. You can see just the circles from when you rolled it. Still in the pastry. That's amazing. This one has a bit more icing sugar on. <laughs> well, I am damn impressed and I'm damn shocked that I made that. Especially so good the first time. And honestly, it wasn't hard. Like, there's a lot of steps. And you might watch this video or you might see other videos or actually read a recipe and be like, whoa, because I was kind of like that. But it really was not hard. It's just, it is a recipe you need to stay home for because it's like constant back and forth, resting, not resting, chilling, not chilling, and all that sort of stuff. But damn incredible. I'm so glad I made these. Um, the oven is so hot behind me. It only has about four minutes left, so when they come out, I'll quickly show you guys and I'll finish up the video then. All right, so I've just taken out the second batch. So obviously the first batch has been blowtorched and icing sugar and cinnamon on. This batch I haven't blowtorched yet. This is just how they came out. So they still got the nice spots on some of them, but obviously we want them more like this, but kind of can't see with the icing sugar anywhere on some of them. Whoops. Um, and these ones just look so much more flakier with the pastry. So I'm not too sure why. I don't know if it's because I didn't do it the tiniest little bit bigger. Then the first batch, but they look so much more flakier. And the um, the design on the bottom, you can see so much more. So I'm definitely glad. I think next time I will do this, I think I'm just going to stick to cutting them into 11 slices each rather than 12. Um, and for these ones, because they're a little bit thicker, they ended up going in for an extra four minutes longer for those. And the color difference is just amazing on the actual pastry. Except for this one, because the custard overflew, so that's completely burnt on the edge there. Oops. But out of all of them, that's the only one that the custard overflowed on. Oops. I'm crashing into everything. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And out of any recipe on my channel, and probably future videos, this is the one I want people to make. This is just amazing. And like I said... It may look hard, I thought it would be hard. It was so simple. The hardest part was just shaping the cases, like the dough, into the case. But like I said, if you just do 11 slices instead of 12, so much easier. So yeah, that's all for me. Thanks and bye.